Hey, hey, hey. Taff and an out of this world story from our space. Kids are smart. Oftentimes, they don't give them enough credit. Today on our space, we watch a mom try to pull a fast one. But these little ones see right through her little fantasy world. It's time for this mama to wake up from her delusions. Smart TV caught my not so smart wife cheating of 15 years. I, male 45, have been married to Amy, female 45, for the last 15 years. I'm an executive at a company, whereas my wife is a homemaker. She used to work at a plant nursery in her 20s, but after our marriage, she chose to be a homemaker. We have two daughters, Emma, female 13, and Ella, female 11. Ours was a happy family until the truth of my wife's adultery was exposed, thanks to the smart TV. Okay, so last week, it was our friend John's birthday. He has settled in a different country for the last few years. We video called him at midnight to wish him a happy birthday. After his well wishes, all four of us, me and my wife, along with John and his wife, were caught up in small talk about work and life. He didn't have any other plans for the birthday night, so we decided to hang out virtually and relax for a while. His wife suggested that we can Chromecast the WhatsApp video call through the TV. In that way, we can sit back, relax, and have some good time together. My friend's wife and Amy are also good friends and we used to hang out a lot when they were in the city. Anyway, Amy connected her phone to the TV since the TV remote app was already installed and active on her phone. We grabbed some beers and snacks and enjoyed the virtual celebration. After a while, Amy felt dizzy and dozed off on the couch while John and I kept chatting. His wife was also asleep. About 15 to 20 minutes into it, the call got disconnected due to internet fluctuations and my wife's WhatsApp screen popped up on the TV. I was just about to call back John when I noticed some... 10 plus unread messages from someone named Lifeline with a heart. I was a bit surprised because it was not me. Curiosity got the better of me and I clicked on the profile picture and found that it was her childhood friend, Matt. I fed him like a zillion times after my marriage because my wife was close to him. They were neighbors and school friends. She once told me that everyone around them in the neighborhood as well as in the school thought that they were either dating or would eventually date each other. However, that never happened. According to my wife, she didn't see him as a romantic partner. Besides, Matt was not interested in women. As of the current status, Matt was single. I wasn't that troubled in seeing my wife's lifeline because she told me that he wasn't interested in women. However, just then another message popped up from the chat. Head. Baby, I miss you. It triggered me to dig into the matter. I hesitantly opened Matt's chat conversation. I found that my wife was chatting with him all this while to her phone when we were connected on the video chat. Sadly for him, she unexpectedly dozed off without giving him a goodnight kiss, and that's why he was blowing up her WhatsApp. After he got the blue tick on his messages, his messages came to like, Why are you replying? Is everything okay? I can't sleep without your goodnight kiss. I can't get over after today's session. OMG, you were so good today. This cannot be a conversation between good friends. By then, I was certain that their relationship was beyond friendship. I scrolled up the chat to find that they sexted almost every night. Oh, I'm chi. What murky conversations they had. While my wife slept peacefully on the couch, I went through all the fills she had with her lover's friend. The chats had occasionally flashes of X-rated photos and nudes in between which gave shivers down my spine. I was numb, yet I wanted to know everything which happened between them. I didn't know how to take screenshots of the conversations on the TV, so I used my phone to click the pictures of the TV screen. After taking four of my pictures, I was done. I didn't care about gathering the evidence. I wanted to know how and why. I wanted to yell, howl, and leash out my frustration, yet I didn't know how to confront her. It was 2 a.m., and I was already down with the countless beers, combined with a few shots of scotch. I barely had any energy to move or even think. I just kept scrolling through the chat, seeing my failed marriage in front of me on the big screen. Everything looked baseless at that point. She shared every minute detail with her lover, even the details of our intimate moments. In fact, after every private moment between us, she used to repeat the same with him in order to compensate for his feelings. I felt disgusted. I wanted to know when all of this started. Hence I kept scrolling, but it looked like a never-ending sea, which got deeper, even after reaching the deepest corner. By then, Matt's messages had stopped coming, and there was a dead silence in the house. I felt haunted. I grabbed a cushion lying beside me, just to ensure that I wasn't dreaming or hallucinating. I was still scrolling mindlessly when Amy suddenly woke up from her slumber. Her sleepy head suddenly got hyperactivated on seeing her dual life displayed on the TV screen. She immediately snatched the remote from my hand, and switched off the TV. She then pounced on her phone and disconnected her from the TV. I just kept staring at her, dumb about it. I saw her opening her WhatsApp chat, glancing to her lover's chat, 
and then closing the app with a huge sigh. That long breath was a sign of surrender. She understood that I knew everything. She held my face with her hands and came closer to me, saying, Baby, I can explain. Please listen to me. I stared back at her and replied, Sure, please explain. She was astonished at my response. She was expecting that I would hyperreact and won't listen to her. I would have done the same if it was around 2.30 p.m. instead of 2.30 a.m. I was almost passing out, partly because of the alcohol and mostly because of the unraveling truth. I repeated, Dang it, explain. She was at a loss for words. She murmured, Actually, hmm, well, I said, You know what? Don't try. You know you're screwed. Saying this, I limped my way to the bedroom. She followed me. I turned towards her and asked her to stay out while slamming the door in her face. I heard her knock a few times, but I passed out soon after. The next morning, I woke up heavy-headed and almost forgetful of what happened last night. I went out of my room to fetch a bottle of water. I throw it was dry. Seeing me coming out of the room, she rushed towards me, and with that sight, all the harrowing memories of last night came rushing too. She tried to hug me, but I asked for her to back off. She retreated with teary eyes and a puppy face. She told me that I misunderstood. I ignored her and went towards the refrigerator to fetch a water bottle. She kept nagging at me that I was just overreacting, and he was just a friend. They never had any physical relationship. It was only on chats. It was just a healthy flirt. I wasn't ready for confrontation yet, but her lame excuses agitated me, and I screamed louder. Really? Who with the earth sends nudes to male friends? And what does that sexting mean? Wasn't he supposed to be uninterested in women? Then how the hell did he find interest in your private parts? It was a Saturday morning, and gladly my children weren't home. They were with my parents for that week to enjoy their summer vacation. I stared at her, asking her for an explanation. My mental state was running pathetic. I wanted to get to the core of the situation, despite knowing that it would crumble to me to pieces. I wanted her to confess every detail of her crime, yet it felt like throwing up whenever she opened her mouth. I grinded my teeth, asking her to speak, but then shut her up when she spoke. I don't know what I was doing. I know I acted unreasonably, but how else would someone react after knowing that he was being cheated on for the past 15 years as entire married life had been a sham? I gulped the entire bottle of water at one go and asked her to confess everything from the start, or else I'll thrash a dual-faced lover, black and blue. This time, instead of covering up or pleading, she revealed the truth. She confessed that she and Matt were always lovers. They got into a physical relationship in high school, and since then, they continued with it. However, Matt was a lazy bum and made it straight to Amy that he can't afford to provide for her. To give a little context about Matt, he's a school dropout who has never earned a penny on his own. His parents had acquired a few decent properties in the suburbs whose rental yield is keeping his expenses afloat. However, that is not sufficient to pay for two people. I met his parents a couple of times during my visit to Amy's house. They were concerned about Matt's laziness and requested Amy to advise him on taking up a job or starting a business. Everyone except Matt was bothered about his future. Anyways, back on track. Amy confessed that she did break ties with Matt many times due to his commitment issues. However, he was always successful in winning her back. Apparently, Matt never had any issues with Amy dating other men, although he never dated anyone but Amy. She had a couple of boyfriends before we started dating, so this sounded true to me, although amazing. What kind of lover does that? I know, maybe a lazy one. I asked her that if they're that close, why didn't she marry him? She said that Matt would have never been able to provide a good lifestyle for her. Besides, Amy, too, never had a stable job, nor was ever aspirational about her career that she could be the breadwinner of the house. So she chose to be a freeloader and lead a dual life. I asked her one last question if the girls were mine or Matt's. She swore that they were mine. I wasn't convinced and still doubted her. She offered to get a DNA test if I wasn't convinced. She said that she couldn't risk having the children with Matt because she was scared that if her truth was uncovered and I abandoned the children, she was sure that Matt wouldn't be able to raise them, even if he wanted to. I don't know if I should be relieved to know that at least the children were mine. I asked her to leave the house or else I would reveal her truth to everyone, even to the girls. They might be young, but smart enough to grasp the truth. She begged me not to disclose this to our daughter, saying that they would hate her and disrespect her. I refilled the bottle of water, grabbed a few beer bottles and went inside my room and locked it. I sat in front of my laptop and stared at the screen for more than an hour. I didn't know what to do next or whom should I talk to. The truth was killing me from the inside. I felt suffocated. After emptying the bottles of beer, I went out of my room, grabbed my car keys, and drove to my in-law's place, which was 30 minutes away. My mother-in-law answered the door about with a pleasant smile, but seeing my red face, she knew something was wrong. She called my father-in-law, who rushed from their bedroom and sat me down. I was sweating and palpating with anxiety. 
I told him that I don't know any better way of confronting this while narrating everything. My throat got dry and my body temperature soared high as I revealed the ugly truth. Midway through this, we heard someone banging on the door. It was Amy. She stormed into the house and asked me to leave immediately. She said that this was our private matter and that we should deal with it and not involve her parents. The next few hours were a series of emotional rage and turmoil. I rebuked her for cheating on me for 15 years while she brushed it off as a mere casual relationship, which meant nothing to her. Gradually, she shifted the blame on me for manipulating her parents against her, and I defended myself. My in-laws sided with me and berated her. I was heavily headed by all this and drove back. I asked her not to return home, ever. I spent the entire weekend drinking, passing out in between, and refilling my stomach with alcohol. The next day was Monday. I went to work feeling groggy and exhausted. At the office I googled some divorce lawyers and booked an appointment with one. I came back home to find some of her belongings missing. I guess she came home when I was away, packed some motor stuff, and left. I didn't bother to check on her. She messaged me stating that she would be staying at a hotel to give me some time to cool off. Seriously? Does she think the matter was so trivial that I would just simply move on? She also sent me messages pleading for forgiveness and making promises about ending her relationship with her lover. It's been a week since that fateful day. Today is Friday again. The week moved too slowly for me. I guess the weekend would be slower. I have an appointment with the lawyer this Monday. I've been reading many Reddit stories to find a solution for my problem, but I guess mine is a complicated case. More than myself, I'm worried about my girls. How do I deal with them? How do I confront them? Should I even confront them at all? Any suggestions or advice is highly appreciated. A first comment sounds like this. Hey, I can understand your pain. I went to a similar situation when I caught my wife with her so-called best friend. My daughter was 12 then, yet I decided to confront her, not in detail. I told her that her mom likes her friend more than me, and hence, would you be living separately? She took it with Shirley. I got custody of my daughter as my wife was a bum. My daughter turned 18 this year and eventually, she uncovered all the two from different sources. She appreciates me for not hiding it from her. Anyways, good luck. It's hard, I know. First off, I'm sorry your wife did you dirty. It's heartbreaking to hear that she admitted that this man has been her lover all along. It sounded like you were way too good for her and she managed to really lock you down and have her own fantasy world unbeknownst to you. Additionally, I think there's a lot of validation from the comment. Children appreciate when they are told the truth, although the truth is life-altering. I think it's better than them finding out later on and really resenting you and their mother for it. If you tell them the truth, they are able to process it in their own way. I don't think counseling should be out of the question either. I think they can really benefit from it. Update 1 Thanks, folks, for the sound advice. Apologies for not updating you guys. However, I did connect with some of you over PM and comments. I know it's been six months since my first post, and let me tell you, it was no less than a bumpy ride. I met the lawyer on that Monday and shared my concerns regarding my daughters. The lawyer advised me to confront the children subtly about the separation and not delve into the details as they might get into mental trauma. He also said that since my wife is jobless and seeing the nature of her affair, I have a good chance of getting custody. On the same day, my parents called Amy to pick up the kids from their house. They were still unaware of the situation. She came home with the kids when I was lying drained on the couch after the stressful meeting with the lawyer. I avoided having any conversation in front of the children and was put up in my room. When she came inside the bedroom, I told her to confront the girls about her adultery. She started sobbing and begged me for forgiveness. She kept saying that the girls would hate her for this. I guess they should. She deserves to be hated. What else do you expect after cheating on your family for 15 years? The lawyer said that it would take a week or so to send the divorce papers to Amy. So, I had a week to straighten out things with the children, as well as with my parents. I told her that I'm divorcing her. She reacted as if this was something out of the blue. She said that the children would be traumatized from the divorce. I wonder where that her motherly feelings were buried all of these years. I asserted that my decision is final and gave her the ultimatum of a week to confront the girls in whichever way she liked or else I would tell them the truth. I grabbed my pillows and dozed off on the bedroom couch. That entire week, I left the house early in the morning and came back late in the evening. As the weekend approached, she wailed and cried throughout the night, sometimes so hard that I would wake up. I did feel pity for her, but how could she do this for so many years? But was she thinking that she could never be caught? She would have gotten multiple opportunities cut off her lover, yet she continued with him. A private conversations, land securities, my deep, dark secrets, everything. She left open in front of her lover. How could I forget all those? On Friday evening, she told me that she had planned a way out of to confront the girls the next day. I nodded. On Saturday, after our breakfast, she told the children that we have some news for them. She said that I have got a transfer to a different country, and so I would be moving out for a few years. I was dumbfounded while my daughter stared at me. 
I asked a sarcastic Lin from the girls. This means I need to move out of the house, right? She rolled her eyes, sighing me to shut up. She said, well, in that case, if the house is too big for the three of us, we can shift to my parents' house and later we can find a smaller place. The girls were perplexed by all this. They were young but not stupid to understand the game she was trying to play. My younger daughter told Amy that whatever she is saying is not making sense, while the elder one questioned us point blank. Are you guys getting divorced? I gave a stern look at Amy and urged her to speak the truth. She sighed and broke down. The girls looked at me for the answers. I told them that they were right about the divorce. I explained to them that we don't feel compatible with each other anymore. My older daughter asserted that I might be having an affair, and that's the reason Amy was crying. She held her mother's hand and asked her if I was cheating on Amy. Instead of clearing the air, Amy just hugged her in anticipation. The girls gave me a disgusted look. I lost my mind at that manipulative woman. I was stunned to see how she turned the table around me. I told my daughters everything, how I found out, and what their mother was up to, of course filtering out the A-plus content. Amy yelled at me for backing out of my words. She told me that I gave her the liberty of giving any explanation to the girls, then why I didn't support her when she was telling them about my transfer. The situation was out of control, and I decided to put my foot down at Amy's manipulation. I called to my parents and my in-laws and asked them to come down ASAP. Both of them lived 25 to 30 minutes away, and within an hour, all four of them were at my house. That one hour was a nightmare for me, which I'll never forget in my life. My daughters were crying while hugging me, and seeing this, Amy tried her best to reason out her actions. She even went as far as portraying me as a liar and manipulating the girls against me. She stopped only when I told her I had photos of those conversations. My parents were shocked to see us in that condition. I narrated the incident in brief. Everyone despised Amy for such a heinous act. She kept sobbing and pleading for forgiveness. For a moment, I felt pity for her. It hurts me to see her in this condition, but she has brought this on herself. Instead of portraying me as the villain in front of my daughters, she could have just told them we felt out of love or something. But she wasn't ready to own the slightest of blame on her, and now her ugly truth lies naked in front of everyone, including her daughters. I made it clear that we are proceeding with the divorce and the girls would be with me. I asked her parents to take her away. Even the girls asked her to leave. My parents decided to stay back for a few weeks and take care of us. It was indeed a tough time for us, but glad we came out strong. I enrolled in therapy for all three of us and we are a much better mental space now. My divorce proceedings are going on. Amy has claimed to share in my house, which I'm contesting because she doesn't deserve a penny. Surprisingly, she didn't contest the custody of the children, making it easy and evident for us to understand her priorities. During the confrontation and even after that, Amy promised to cut off all ties with the lover. However, after she moved in with her parents, she was caught visiting her lover's house. Her siblings caught her and humiliated her to the extent that she had to eventually leave the house. Her parents humiliated Matt for his actions and informed his parents as well. The last I know is that his parents have cut off all property rents which Matt was getting and asked him to make a living of his own, while Amy is working as a sales agent in a showroom. I don't think about her anymore. I'm focusing on raising my daughters and providing them the best of everything I can. Wish me luck. Now for a couple quick comments. First one, your wife is a real witch. I was amazed at how she tried to manipulate your daughters. Glad that you didn't let her overpower you. Don't be guilty. You do the right thing. If you kept shut, she would have turned your daughter against you. Good luck in the future. Hope you find someone better. The other comment goes like this. Man, get a background check done before marrying anyone. Or get a PI first. I'm definitely going to hire a PI on my girlfriend before marrying her. I got my lesson here. Thanks and wish you luck. Honestly, amazed isn't the right word for hearing how your ex tried to lie manipulate her way through that. It's not shocking because she has literally been doing this for your whole relationship. And your child's whole lives. It's disappointing to know that she is capable of doing that to not only you, but to her own children. What's refreshing to hear is that your children saw through her BS and knew that she was lying. You're an excellent father and you're doing exactly what you need to do for them. I'm sorry she tried to paint a different picture. What are your thoughts? Would you have done anything differently? Let us know in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today on our space. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the next video. We'd hate for you to miss out. Until next time.